Hey there, crew. It's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today as we go all in on our holiday theme. That's going to be a little bit more in the twist today, but for our overall weekly, we're going to create a really fun and inspirational weekly, hopefully for you, that's going to leave room for more decoration. I know usually we focus very much on the minimalist. We are. You can actually use the spaces we're going to create for anything, but this week we're going to set up a Monday through weekend, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with space for the weekend and some task overview, but leave a whole section just for some fun inside of the twist. So our materials for this week, I have my B5 size Archer and Olive Doctorate notebook. I'm almost done with this. I cannot believe it. I probably will be finishing this up right at the end of this year, which will be perfect timing as we go into our new one. I'm going to have a whole video for the 2023 setup. I'm really excited for this year. Also, our basic things we're going to be using, we have our ruler. We're also going to be using a pencil to kind of line everything out today. This is actually a super fun one that I have from Uni, previously known as Uniball. This is their advanced. Uh, Really cool stuff. I'll link it for you in the descriptions below. And then for our fine liner, we're just going to be using, well, not a B. We should be using a fine <laughs> Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen in black today. Now, I have something very special here. You're going to be hearing a lot about this brand in the coming weeks. This brand is called Anto. I actually found out about them from a friend because I'm going to be doing a full review on their planners that they have, and they're really amazing. But along with their planners, I love, they also sent me this fantastic pen. Now, this is gonna be the pen I use for the entire week. I'm kind of working ahead a little bit and testing this out before my review video. But this is the Pen C. This is a really cool pen. So magnetic top here. The coolest part of this though, is that the ink that is inside of this pen it's nice, but it doesn't have to stay. And it's actually not specific to Anto. As a matter of fact, you can use over 100 different ballpoint pen types inside of here just by unscrewing the top. This one I actually think has a zebra blue ink, but we don't want blue ink today. Instead, we're going to be using the gel ink from a Muji pen, putting it inside of the Pen C, and uh, going to be using that this week, which I'm really pumped about. So the Pen C works, like I said, with over like 100 different type of gel inserts. Zebra, Uniball, Pentel, Muji, which we have here, Pelican. We also have Lamis that you can use, Pilots, just a whole bunch of really cool things. But what I love about it is that Everything's kind of controlled by this little mechanism right here. As you insert this, it tightens around it. So you can use so many different types of inks depending on what you like inside of here just by screwing those on there. And then I'm ready to go with this pen. I'm really pumped about this. We're gonna go ahead and sit this off to the side since this is like our, our specialty pen of the day, which I'm really excited about. As I mentioned, I have a full review for their planners coming up, but you can head over to Anto right now. It's A-N-T-O-U 1010.com. You'll see all of the cool stuff that they have, including the Pen C over there. And you're also going to get a sneak peek of the planner that I'm going to be doing reviews of in the very near future too. All those links are gonna be in the descriptions for you below. If you're new to this channel, the way that I set up these videos is the first half is going to be about the minimalist setup. And then the second half, which we call the twist, is where we start to add other things in. So this part here is all about the setup. And then later on, we add in some watercolor and stamps and things like that. So the way that I've set up this week is, looks a little bit difficult. Uh, I'll tell you, it's not necessarily as, as straightforward as some have been in the past with just straight lines. But once you understand kind of the grid layout, it's a lot easier than it looks like. So the way that this is broken up is a double page spread. And what I've done is I'm going to first split each of those pages into two. So I have 15 squares, two, and then 15. And that's how we'll utilize this. The right hand page is going to be the same exact way as well. So really it's split in half vertically. And then what we're doing is we're splitting the page horizontally into three columns. So what you'll have starting at the very top of your page is going to be 14 squares. We're going to skip two squares, and then we're gonna go another 14, skip two, and then go 14, which will take us to the bottom. 
my sketch is just a sketch, so it's all kind of wonky. And it will really start to fill itself in when we go to the page. So let's go over back to that page so we can set everything up there. I've gone ahead and I've counted everything out with my pencil first to make sure that my lines are all going to be nice and straight when I set this up. So you'll see I just put a few little tick marks across here. Now in the middle of the top and the middle of the bottom row here, I've just added some dots. That's more for the twist, for some stamps we're going to be using. So you can just ignore those for the minimalist setup. What we're really paying attention to are going to be these nine rectangles going down the page. Now, because I have some space over here that I'm going to have stamps, I'm only going to be filling in the verticals across the top and the bottom on this. This could look very cool. I definitely love the way that it's gonna look, but to save myself a little bit of space on the back end of this, I'm going to go ahead and just keep it very open and then I'll finish out with my pen later on. If you're going straight, you're not gonna add anything extra inside of here. You're just gonna use your marker or your pen and just fill in these rectangles all the way around. It looks a little bit like a puzzle right now, but this could be a very cool layout for you if you wanted to, or you could go ahead and square the rest of these off if you wanted to for your minimalist layout. I'm actually going to leave this left side just wide open. The reason is, is that all of these rectangles here create their own space. So I know I have whatever I need over here for any type of writing and notes that I need to do. I can really use all of that space there. For the days of the week this time around, I'm gonna use just a really fun font that I really like. If you haven't seen me do this before, it's just one of my favorites. I just write in a very big letter and then a small letter. I write in all caps, so I think it looks pretty cool. And I think you should probably do that too if you wanna really make it look neat. So for Monday, for instance, we're gonna do like a big M and a little O and then a big N. Tuesday is going to be a big T, a little U and a big E. And the size difference just looks really cool on the page. And I think with it being Halloween, it gives that cool kind of eerie looking font. It's not all the same size. It's a little bit rough looking. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites to do. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put them in the bottom corner of each one of the days of the week. Now I'm gonna do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then weekend over here leaving all these in the middle open. Again, this is where all of the decoration for me is going to go, but you could also use this for tasks and notes. You could use this for trackers and things like that if you wanted to. So you can follow along with me, or again, you can do your own thing at home. I always love when you do that. So that's a really nice, quick and easy way to set up a weekly notes and task over here on the left. And then we have the days of the week over here for you. You can certainly add in the numbered dates if you wanted to on these. So this is where I'm gonna leave you if you're just here for the minimalist approach. You love it. Hopefully this works out well for you. I'm excited to see how you use these center spots. But if you're here for the twist, let's go ahead and have some fun. How many little stamps are you gonna do? We're always so focused on that minimalist approach. This week I said, no, Mark, we're gonna have a whole lot of fun inside of the twist. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays because it's just a fun, creative, spooky time for us. So we're going to be using a whole bunch of stuff. Let me go ahead and just move this off to the side so we can talk about each item first. So. Yes, as you heard in a little bumper, what little stamps are we gonna use? Well, we've got a handful that we're going to be using today. The first one is actually going to be from Archer and Olive. This is from a collection from them last year. This is called A&O Familiars. This actually, they should have called it Halloween, honestly, because it has all of the cool Halloween prints on it. It's not exactly the same, but pretty close. We've got the raven on here. We also have some cool frogs and we've got cats and moths. My favorite one and the one we're going to be using today is actually the serpent. This is actually a serpent that had been used very often on a lot of their notebooks. I absolutely love it. And this is the one that we're going to be using today for some of our spaces. I also am excited to finally use this. I got these from a craft store last year. Think of Joanne Fabrics. And I'm like, been waiting, dying pun intended to use them. Now, some of these, not quite my style, but it came inside of a pack. I like the little pumpkins, happy Halloween, no tricks, just treats. But some of these other kind of, they're kind of cute, but probably for like cards or something. Hey, pumpkin, bootyful, 
graveyard goodies, no bones about it, your spooktacular, trick or treat, bugs and kisses. Like they're fun, they would be great cards. I really got it for the bones, I got it for the pumpkins, the spider and some of these other ones. So I'm just going to be using the no tricks, just treats and then I also am gonna be using the pumpkin and the spider and the web up here for some of the fun in the center as well. We also have to add a little bit of that fun stationery inside of here. So these stamps are from BGM. I really love these, they're fun little stationery ones. So we have little cards and ink bottles and pens, um, little stuff like that. I'm mostly going to be using the ink bottles, specifically these two uh, and this one down here, just to fill in some of the spaces around some of those. So it'll be kind of like a pattern-ish type of approach. Not going to be using these like super heavy, but wanted to get a few little inks in there because ink bottles are cool, no doubt about it. Along with all of those, I have two different inks I'm gonna to try to use. We have the Archer and Olive one that we used last week. This has a really cool bronzy gold color to it. So we might use that for some things. I also have this fantastic red that I haven't used before. So I wanna get this on the page as well. And then I also have VersaFine. This is just the black ink. Love this for the detail. If the other ones aren't working out too well, we'll go back to the, the good old, good old. If you're using stamps, make sure that you have your acrylic blocks. You need these to get those sticky stamps on and then stamping them onto the page. So we have those. And then we're gonna have some fun with some highlighter. These actually came as a part of the Archer and Olive Halloween box that we got that unfortunately already sold out. So you won't be able to get these for yourself. But as always, when these boxes come out and they try these things, you can almost guarantee they'll be back. But these are glow in the dark. So we're actually gonna have some fun with these and do some drop shadows around the page this week. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like in the dark afterwards. It's kind of cool looking. And we're gonna need some color on this page, at least a little bit. So I'm going to be using the Sidekick from Nicholson Peerless Transparent Watercolors. We used these last week and they work so incredibly well. We're going to be using the chrome orange and some of these other ones today as we fill in the pumpkins and some of the other things on the page. So always love having this. So the first thing we're going to do is get our serpent on the page and we're going to be doing this in the red ink. I haven't used this before, so I'm hoping that it looks cool because there are some very nice fine details in here. What I've done is I've gone ahead and penciled in the center part of the each rectangle. It's kind of a square, they're 15 by 14, but they are 14 long. So it's gonna be seven dots down is going to be the center. I'm also going to be doing that over here in between each one of these to create a really cool invisible line. It'll just be the serpent that's going to be separating these the same way that it's going to be separating out over here. So that's why I left those blank and open. All right, that turned out pretty cool in there. I thought that was gonna be a little bit darker red, like a blood red. It turned out okay though. Not mad at it, just was expecting something a little bit different. All right, the next thing we're going to do is just set up the no tricks, just treats. We'll be putting that right here in the center and then doing some fun stuff around there. And then we also have some fun pumpkin stuff here. We're just gonna sit on the page a little bit and we'll set these up here. And then once we let those dry, we'll come back in with some of the watercolor. Now, because we're going to be doing watercolor around and on top of these items here, I'm going to be using the VersaFine black ink because this is waterproof. So after it dries, it can have water over top of it. So we're gonna go ahead and do those first. And then what will come in is with the detail, we'll do this in that gold bronze with some of those ink bottles around here. Cause you have to add in the stationery along with the Halloween stuff. Like it just works. Okay, so we finished up all of the stamps. These have had time to dry. So I am gonna come back in and just add some of the fun orange inside of here. And the last thing that we're going to do is adding some little small details to fill in the spaces. I have a really bad habit of overdoing it with everything that I do in my entire life. <laughs> and pages like this are no different. So instead of me adding a bunch of different stamps in here to kind of take up space, we'll be using our pen to go in and add some small little details as little spaces fillers that I've come to call them. So let's go ahead. If you are not familiar with Peerless, yeah, they make awesome watercolors that are made in the sheets instead of pods. And all you have to do is just take your paintbrush and your water. You just put it onto your individual swatch. It pulls up the color and then you can start using it right away. All that we're going to do with this, I do have a very special one. I'm gonna do a little something over here for the web. 
I just saw earlier today that Archer and Olive was coming out with more watercolor. Uh, we are going to be using this. This came from a release not too long ago where they had a bunch of really nice ones, but they're very shiny. So we're actually going to be using the uh, Celestine that's over here. It's going to add a little bit of color and a little bit of glitter, but nothing like overly glittery. <laughs> it's just going to look cool. We're going to give that just a second to dry. As we do that, I want to show you how we're going to be using some space fillers today. There's a few different space fillers that I like to use on my pages. The first and my all time favorite is so simple. It's just three dots. And what we do is we space them out around our page and around any type of lettering or around any type of stamps or drawings that we have. We space them around inside of there. My other favorite is a super easy one, it's just a open circle. It looks really cool mixed with some of these other shapes that we're going to be using as well. And it does a really good job as a space filler. My other favorite, little asterisks or stars, if you want to call them, they do a really good job of taking up space as well. And the last one that I like to use is a diamond. My diamonds don't always look super cool, but that's the fun part about this is they don't have to look any certain way. They're just space fillers. So we'll be using all of these on the inside of our page with our pen. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, the little dots in here and those extra space fillers do such a good job of setting everything up so nicely. So the last thing we're going to do is actually use one of these glow in the dark highlighters. We're gonna go ahead and take this and just create some drop shadows along the pages here underneath each one of these. And we might come in a little bit on some of these details just for fun. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll finish up. All right, that's gonna wrap it up with those final little touches. We'll see how that glow in the dark stuff looks right at the end of this video, but everything is set up for our week. We have Monday through Friday over here along the space for our weekends. We left the whole block in the middle here just for some from decoration. We added pumpkins and stamps and potions and all kinds of fun stuff and did a little bit of line filling work today. So hopefully that's something new that you can use for yourself. And I absolutely love these cool red serpents that we have on the pages as well and all of the space for notes and tasks. I appreciate you hanging out having some fun during the twist if you love more fun ideas like this definitely hang out in just a second after we check out how this looks in the dark i'll have an entire playlist of all fun bullet journal ideas for you to use in your weekly spreads mm -hmm.